Hey. What you doing? I'm Brandon Horwin. And I'm Sophie Williams. And today's special guest is... Hi, everybody. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Sophie. So nice to meet you over Zoom. I'm Cesar Samiola, and I'm an actor in Come From Away. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Delon Grant. It's so nice to meet you as well. Uh, I am also a, an actor in Come From Away on Barber. Great. Well, we are so thrilled to have you both and are so excited to be um, learning about your journeys and checking in with you today. So um, we, I just wanna get started with that. And I would appreciate if each of you can tell us a little bit about your theater journey, how you got involved in theater and sort of where you know, the past led to, to where you are today. Sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, I, uh, I started doing theater a little bit uh, late in, in terms of like high school. Like a lot of people start with them when they're really young. Um, I started, I think my first play was about 14. Um, and, uh, you know, I was a weird kid, kind of didn't know where I fit um, as a lot of uh, uh, we theater folk tend to be. Uh, and then I found music and I found theater and uh, I found my tribe, right? My every, all of a sudden things, uh, there was a reason to go to school. I got my, my grades changed, my my extracurriculars changed, my whole spirit changed. So um, I, I said that was really a big lifesaver for me. And, and once I was bit by the bug, as we say, uh, I, um, I knew that I wanted to do it for the, there was nothing else I wanted to do with my life. So um, I went and studied at the University of Michigan. I studied acting there. Um, and uh, I always thought I wanted to teach, which I'm doing some now. Um, and so part of that was getting I, I need, wanted to get a master's degree and uh, I got my master's degree in musical theater performance from the um, Boston Conservatory of Music. Don't know why it took me so long to think of that. Um, and uh, part of the reason for getting my degree in musical theater is because I moved to New York after undergrad and I was getting a lot of um, callbacks for musicals and I realized that that was a skill that I kind of had, but I, I didn't feel like I was on par with some of my, my um, contemporaries. So I, uh, I went back to school and um, yeah, and, and you know, the rest is, 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 is now, I guess. I've been uh, working, I graduated from grad school 2009. I've been working here and there since I graduated from undergrad. Um, and I joined Come From Away about three years ago. Um, and that was my first, my Broadway debut. What a great Broadway debut, uh, biased, but it's such a, an awesome a show and a great company of people to work with and for. Um, yeah, so that's that's leading up till today. Great. You want me to jump in? Please. Yeah, I um I really got introduced to the theater because of my teacher in grammar school. Um, my parents and my family came uh, from Guatemala and kind of Broadway and this whole world of entertainment was not really in, in our world. And my, my teacher, my grammar school teacher brought us to see a show and I just remember that moment that, that I, I knew that this was what I was going to be doing. I didn't know how to do it or how to even be involved and it was because of her that I got involved in a, um, a performing arts center. Uh, I just started kind of really kind of involving myself in every type of arts uh, going forward uh, through grammar school, through junior high school, through high school. I went to a conservatory program uh, in upstate New York, Ithaca College, and um, I graduated from there and uh, I moved back to New York uh, and I, I went to this open call for this show called Shakespeare's r &J. It was a four person version of Romeo and Juliet. And um, I got cast out of this open call. It was probably like the most amazing day because all of a sudden I, I realized I could do what I've always you know, dreamt of doing. And, um, and two years later, we became the longest running Shakespeare in, in world history. And, um, and then we just kept going from there. At that point, I thought like, my God, if this is the entertainment industry, it's, I, I love it. But after that, it was really about the grind, about auditioning and finding your next shows and um, really going through the business of, of show business. Um, but, uh, you know, thank God after that, it, it's just been a, a wonderful ride uh, working in regional theaters all across the country and uh, concerts and doing a couple of Broadway shows. And, and now we're here at Come From Away. That's excellent. I mean, you both have such a great story and it's always a, a fascinating question to hear 
the paths and journeys everyone took to get where they are today. Um, and, and speaking of where you are today, currently both of you with Come From Away, two big questions that I have are, how is it portraying real people in a musical? And I say people because each uh, um, character sort of branches off to many others in sort of a really brilliant way. And um, coupled with that, what kind of impact has come from a way had on your life and career? I mean, both of you mentioned how, how uh, it really is a special show. So can you just take us through that, that thought process as well? Well, sure. I, do. I always find that there's such a great uh, responsibility when we're portraying a real people and uh, real events that everybody remembers kind of viscerally in their, in their life. Um, but at this point, I have to tell you that we're all family at this point. We've met almost everybody that we portray in this show. Um, we're very close to them, especially through social media and, and meeting them at, at uh, various events. But this is kind of like part of our extended family at Come From Away. Um, it's amazing every time we hear that one of our people that we portray is in the audience, kind of the whole place lights up uh, to this day. And some people have seen it 20, 30, 40 times, uh, even, <laughs> even much more than that. Um, but it's quite an honor being able to portray uh, these people. And there's a sense too that um, when you get to meet somebody, you know, it's, it's rare as an actor that you do get to meet somebody that you're portraying. Um, that, that's really a fascinating experience because not only do you hear their direct experience about that they had in Gander for, in terms of coming from away, um, but there's something about the character that you're creating and the person you're watching you create them, right? That's a really unique, interesting experience. Um, I didn't get to meet uh, both of my characters and to, or the people I portray. I'm, I'm, a lot of us are, are um, composites or hybrids of, of several characters in Come From Away. I didn't get to meet them until later in my, in the, my, my tenure in the show. Um, but meeting them, uh, to, to Caesar's point, it's just, it was such an honor. And I felt like I was meeting a rock star, <laughs> you know, uh, because it's like, I, I live your life. I live your experience. And that's so, it's so cool that, um, that I get to have this because I, that dramaturgy, as we say, that 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 um, the, uh, the the history or, or all of the contextualizing we do in in the you know with theater work before we do a show, um, that that isn't always there. Uh, that that a biological person isn't always there to help you along with that. So that's really cool. That's awesome. So like in the same vein, um, I really want to know who is like the best or the most memorable guest you've had at Come From Away for both of you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Hillary Clinton was a huge one uh, for me because uh, it, it was, we looked out and she was right there in the second row stage right. And you know, the, the theater has these amazing seats, house seats that are like 10th row center that usually any anybody who who is, you know, a VIP would be sitting in those seats. And uh, our management tried to move her over to that section. She said, absolutely not. My, my daughter bought me these tickets. Chelsea bought me these tickets and I'm sitting in the seats that she bought me. And there she was like second row with, uh, with uh, President Clinton, uh, like right there right in front of us. And, uh, and then she came backstage and they could not be more gracious. Um, another favorite is, is Justin Trudeau, uh, just because it's Justin Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Um, for me, uh, I, I wasn't there for, I, I joined about six, seven months after. So uh, um, a lot of the, the um, I, I, did, I was in there for the Hillary Clinton experience, which hearing Caesar tell him, I'm like, oh my God, it's so crazy. Um, uh, I, a big one for me was Henry Winkler. I don't know if everyone knows who Henry Winkler was or is. Yeah. <laughs> but Henry Winkler, um, he's currently on uh, that, show, what's the HBO show, Barry? He's on, he got, he just won some awards mm -hmm. for performance on Barry, but it goes back to like the Fonz and Happy Days, right? Um, one of the reasons he was so, it was so cool him not only because of you know he's an amazing actor but he was so 
he felt he made us feel like we were stars you know I, he was like oh my gosh i couldn't he was so gracious and so kind and i was like no sir you being here i'm I, it was just really a cool experience to 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 be washed with that much love and appreciation. Um, and then um, you know I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of Lin Manuel Miranda, so he came back and was also super uh, um, uh, congratulatory and appreciative, and and that was really cool as well. So many people we had so, we've had so many people come. It's it's really awesome when people come to see the show because you're like, oh man, you get to see what I do. I'm a, such a fan, and you're seeing me. It's so cool. Yeah, we've had, we've had people come that like, we can't say who they are, but they have had them come in disguise because they're so huge that if anybody noticed who they were, it would be kind of like a, a madhouse in that theater. Wow. But just to know that that person was sitting there in full disguise, it just always, uh, always makes me giggle a bit. <laughs> That's great. Brandon knows, I think like these questions and hearing your answers are probably like my favorite part of doing this podcast. <laughs> I just like to know it's fun. <laughs> well, it's, it's good because, you know, these are kinds of stories and things you would not hear. I mean, you know, elsewhere or, you know, unless you really deep into a conversation, it's, it's very interesting to hear. All right. So I'd also like to know, um, what were you doing? What were you working on uh, prior to the COVID shutdown? I mainly come from away, obviously, but um, I, I love taking classes. So I was actually taking a lot of classes that that had nothing to do with theater. I was taking yeah. Spanish classes and the photography class, and um, and uh, I so continued with some of those things online as as we all did when the shutdown. But um, uh, readings here and there and things like that. But but come from away was the main project for me. Yeah, I mean, obviously, come from away was a was a biggie. I. I very much do a lot of developmental work. So I was um, was in the middle of, of doing two kind of like beautiful uh, shows that will hopefully be coming in a, in a season or two. Um, one of them with this incredible uh, group called uh, Santa Cecilia that uh, brings the story of uh, like water for chocolate, you know, into the musical kind of realm. And um, I, I just hope it keeps going because it's it's kind of a sound that I'm I'm desperate to hear uh, in this kind of like commercial venue. That's really interesting. I I like that point about um, like finding new sounds because I've I've thought about that a lot recently and like how Broadway has kind of um, forced this like almost homogenized sound and it has been for like around the last like 10 years. That's something I've been thinking of a lot about recently. So I'd be excited to hear that um, as well. So I just wonder like, where do either of you see, you know, Broadway going from here? We've been shut down for months. Uh, what larger institutional changes do you see happening to the industry? Hmm. Well, there is definitely going to be a surge of, and finally, uh, and rightly so, of diversity on our stages. And even more importantly, uh, in the people who actually um, create the pieces that everyone's coming to see. Um, there, even, even now, when there's such a push for diversity, there is the percentage of, uh, of Black and Brown creative artists that are represented, especially in the developmental process of the show, are so minuscule. Um, and we are in an industry that demands that uh, we kind of show a representation of the real world around us. So I'm really excited that we're taking steps towards that direction. Um, and uh, I'm excited about the stories that are gonna be coming out. I think this, this time in our pandemic has forced us to really uh, kind of like hold down our creativity. And I feel like this floodgate is about to be open uh, as soon as uh, our stages, our stage doors actually are opened. Um, I can't imagine the kind of, of creative work that's been going on throughout this pandemic, um, these voices that are kind of dying to be let loose. Uh, so I'm really excited about the future of our industry. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, I think um, uh, the future of Broadway, I think, is is um, unknown, obviously. But I think, to, to Caesar's point, there's been a lot of germinating that's been happening during this um, time, just because you have uh, time, <laughs> right? You have time and space, and I think we're all kind of going through a collective and an individual. Um, 
uh, existential crisis, <laughs> you know? And so to Caesar's point again, it's when you have those, those, um, those moments where you're just reflecting with yourself, um, as creative people, we need that outlet. So I'm excited to see what comes, what comes um, creatively in terms of the stories being told as well. But I also am really curious to see how the system changes. And I mean, you know, there's people have been trying to do something virtually with live virtually for a while. Um, and I know there's been some kind of hiccups or some things have flowed really well and others haven't. But I wonder what systems that were we're going to create uh, as a result of being away from one another um, because uh, we've all been forced to do Zoom <laughs> constantly, right? And I know that we'll be together, but is there a way to reflect on that experience? What's that story, right? How do we tell, how do you tell the story of being on Zoom live, right? That's interesting. Um, so I I'm really interested to see how like the form changes or how we uh, manipulate the form. I think that could be, um, I think that's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how it does. That's great. And do you think, I mean, you know, there will be a day and it, hopefully it's really soon. I mean, considering a vaccine and lots of advancements with therapeutics, we're really making strides to turning a big corner here. So the day that, you know, it's safe and folks are welcome back. I mean, how do you envision the energy to be behind every, you know, behind the curtain and then out in the house like it, you know it's it's gonna be unbelievable yeah I know it's gonna be an, I'm gonna be a, a wreck <laughs> I'm gonna be an emotional <laughs> wreck not only because of our being together but uh, to something Caesar was talking about right the, the, there's a buildup of pressure right and there's uh, we're gonna we need that release we need to get back to some sense of normal and, and relatively soon thank God for the vaccines and, and therapeutics like you were saying um, but I think it's gonna be uh, we, we feel with come from away our show is you know it's 90 minutes long and and we are excuse me um, uh, uh, 70 well, how long is it Caesar it's like uh, it's like 100 minutes long yeah 100 minutes long Sorry, uh, not, not even 100 minutes long, and, and it uh, it plows through. As soon as it starts, it like it just plows through. Uh, so at the end, the audience erupts, and you feel like you're at a Bono concert every night, you know. So I know when, when the audience leaps to their feet and screams, um, and I'm sure it's going to be like that in all the Broadway shows, you know. Um, I can't wait to go actually see a show and and be a part of that experience of, of watching and being able to support and scream for for my fellow artists as well. I'm also really excited for the, the work we're all going to have to do to get the stamina back to Ooh, do this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think audiences realize what this is like. I mean, these are definitely, definitely a kind of athlete that, that does live theater on a consistent basis. Um, and I, I know, just speaking for myself, for me to get my show stamina back, it's going to take a, a, a bit of training and rehearsal uh, trying to get back to that. Um, but I'm really excited for that process because that means we'll all be together and kind of rebuilding our family after what will be probably a year and a half away. I mean, these are people that I've seen every single day, almost every single day for five years of my life that um, I didn't even get to say goodbye to when the shutdown happened. We just got a random text and then we never saw each other again, you know, most of us to this day. Uh, so I'm just, I, I can't wait for that moment when we are all in the building together and we kind of just like rush in to hug each other. And we get to touch each other. Like that yeah. is the one experience, right? I mean, I, I can probably list on both hands who the people I've hugged in the last nine months, you know? Um, and none of them is my mother, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's such an excellent point. It's really going to be a remarkable time to be there and be in the moment. Um, shifting gears a bit, Caesar, you've personally originated several ro roles on Broadway, and there probably are some skills that are different from possibly recreating something, not necessarily recreating, but taking on something that has already been established on the stage. So can you take us through a few of those roles from what shows are they and how did you have to fine tune exactly what path you took? Absolutely. I mean, the, uh, the, the show, we're talking about Broadway shows. Yes, the, the, the last Broadway show I did was Sister Act. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a totally different beast when you're, when you're kind of creating a role and also part of the developmental process of a show. 
you know, every day, if you are with a team like we had at Come From Away, um, it is so collaborative and what you bring to the table matters. And uh, what you bring to the table can actually change the trajectory of not only your show, but of the character that you're doing, of storylines, of lighting decisions, sometimes set decisions, um, certainly music, certainly lines in a show. Um, it, I, I live for the creative process of a brand new uh, musical, actually. Uh, because there's so many cooks uh, in the kitchen at that point. It's just part of what we do. Um, and it, it is it is kind of like watching people weave in and out and how to collaborate with each other. You know, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. I, I love uh, seeing in just in our come from away developmental process, how uh, Kelly Devine would step in uh, and give a, a suggestion for a moment uh, that had nothing to do with choreography that completely changed uh, the trajectory of a scene or how uh, Ian, our musical director would do the same thing with the song. Um, and it would change kind of the trajectory of how that scene would be played and how that scene would be seen going forward uh, for the history of this show. Um, and that only really happens when you're, you're at the start of the process of it. So I, I'm always trying to do everything that I can to, to uh, be kind of like in the room, as they say, when, when these shows are being created. Um, and something like Come From Away, I think uh, for, for what Delon had to do, it, it's been a unique experience because, because I think Delon, you've been able to completely create your version of this character instead of having to step into uh, something that was predetermined already. And I think that's unique to our, our show as well. Yeah, 100% that I've, I've replaced before in shows and, um, you know, uh, big shows like this, they're machines, right? They're there and they're machines for a reason because it has to be the show, same show every night. They, the, the costumes, the, the choreography, everything's set. Um, so you have to be, um, Part of the mission, you have, you become a cog in it. Um, you're so creative, obviously, but this by far is the most uh, come from away joining this company has been uh, the most freeing in that replacement experience that I've had. They really allowed me, as he was saying, to figure out who every one of my characters were and and bring that to the table, which I'm super super grateful for. Absolutely, and Delon, this is your Broadway debut, correct? It is. It is. So how? I mean, what an amazing show! Number one to to debut in, but also how has that journey been? I mean, since, you know, it, it's been, it was three years ago, you said at the beginning. So what was it like for you to step on the Broadway stage and, you know, make your mark? Yeah, it's so funny. Um, I, uh, I, it, it, I was su supremely grateful for this being my, my Broadway show. Um, as you become a professional, you just kind of want to work, you know, you just kind of want to um, do interesting projects, you're a storyteller, tell stories. Uh, and so I had kind of forgotten about the Broadway dream, like it's not that I wasn't auditioning for it, right? Auditioning for Broadway projects and Broadway shows. Um, but I'd forgotten how significant it was, if that makes any sense, meaning you just kind of get through the day to day and get to that audition. And if you get it, you do. You do and and um, if you don't, you don't. But once, to your point, when I stepped on the Broadway stage, I was, it was my Broadway debut. It was the day before uh, my 30, 34th birthday, doing the math in my head. Um, <laughs> the day before my 34th birthday. Uh, it, so that was compounding the whole experience. Um, but I had just forgotten how much it meant and how valuable it was because when I got the show, I had a few weeks to rehearse and then it was like, go. It was such a, uh, you know, being shot out of a cannon, such a mad dash. Then once I was there, I was able to take it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Broadway, it's Broadway. Um, and uh, as Caesar and I will continue to iterate throughout this entire conversation, uh, I, we work with some of the most amazing people. We work for some of the most amazing people. And you know, after we all bowed uh, on stage, I, I ran off stage left and the entire company surrounded me and gave me a big hug. And like, I just burst into tears. It was, it, was, it meant so much. Um, and uh, every what I really, whenever someone leaves come from away or whenever we have a, a new company member join, um, that that you 
experience it wasn't unique to me we've done that for everybody when we have somebody that leaves come from away um our amazing band does this playoff at the end and we all just rush out and we dance the playoff uh with the, for the people that are leaving and it's um you know tears and, and joy and, and all that stuff but um that that experience of having everyone kind of lift you up um no matter what the brought, debut in the show on broadway or or um you know uh if you're leaving is is um part of our experience. So that made it special as well. That's amazing. That's such a great story about family and togetherness and side of show. That's great. Um, so Delon, again, not only are you a performer, but you have like a real talent as a photographer. We've Stop seen it. so many of your, <laughs> no, we've seen so many of your photos and they're great. Do you want to talk about that? Like how you got into photography? Yeah, um, I actually have just been thinking about, I need to pick those cameras up because <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I, was, I toured with another Broadway show, Jersey Boys, I think I mentioned it maybe earlier. Um, I toured with that show for three and a half years, so it was a long time. And um, on the road, I, performing is everything and we love that, but I, I kind of found my not being home, not having a home base, being in a new city every day or every uh, week or a couple of weeks, I would explore the city in the first half of the week. And then I was kind of like, well, what do I do now? I guess I just continue to explore the city, but I wanted a way to document it. Um, and so a buddy of mine on tour, we both bought cameras and we were just gonna go around documenting um, the places that we went. Uh, turns out I don't like pictures of buildings. <laughs> I don't like pictures of bridges. I don't like pictures of hills. I, it was just, that was boring to me. I like pictures of people. I was like, oh no, I want to take a picture of your face you know um and so i just started taking pictures of my castmates and, and asking people if they needed headshots and i was like i'm not really saying i'm good at it but um who knows and a, a friend of mine um was the first person to to ask and it went well and i was like look just I, I kept doing it and i think the reason i'm drawn to it is because there's so much about being an actor that is someone else giving you their, their story or giving you the vision to interpret, which I love. I love that puzzle. I love excavating who is this character and, and, and finding that. Um, but there's, a, there's something about having control over the story and, and for me. And that's what I discovered behind the camera. I was like, oh, I get to, despite there are a lot of people who you take photos of who are like, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, I looked, I don't know. And you're like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And your job is to help them open up, right? And to get the best photo of them that you can. So I love that I was in control of that and, and making someone else um, look beautiful or feel beautiful. Um, so that control and, and creative um, uh, agency, I guess, is, is a reason that, that I've continued to do it and, and be drawn to it. I love that so much. <laughs> that really is awesome that it's another way of storytelling for you in a way and in, in capturing the moment, but in telling the story, you know, began with the cities that you were visiting, which is a story to tell in itself. So that's sure. awesome. That's really great. Um, so have you, have you guys been able to adapt to the online format of performing or, you know, being involved some way throughout these past several months? And then um, parallel to that, what advice do you have uh, in particular for young artists and future industry professionals to, you know, sort of keep going at this time to, you know, understand that this is just a moment in time and where, um, they can go from here? I mean, absolutely. Uh, this is just a moment in time. And, uh, you know, that amazing phrase, this too shall pass. Uh, it is so true. Um, I remember like this, this one very specific moment where I, where I was so down about what had happened to our industry. And I found myself kind of uh, getting into a rut of, of not knowing what to do and how to go forward. Um, and, and it was something I kind of had to actively break through, but there is so much out there, even right now during this, uh, during this pandemic, during this shutdown, for a creative person to be able to uh, take charge and explore their creativity in different ways. Um, uh, th throughout all of this, uh, it has been one of the most kind of exciting creative times for me 
because I've allowed myself to try things that I've never tried before. You know, I, I just finished directing a project uh, for Webster University, their conservatory theater program there. Um, I'd never directed, uh, you know, a full two act musical uh, before in my life. And I couldn't be prouder about what these artists and students did on the online forum. I mean, uh, developing a, a two act musical is not an easy thing for anybody involved, but especially for the actors when they have to self manipulate the camera and set and design and costumes and everything else that's involved. And they did it. Um, and the, the, the industry is actively going forward right now. You know, I, I, I've been able to, uh, to, to be on film sets. I've been able to do developmental work right now um, for two projects that I'm under an NDA for, so I can't really talk about it, but they're really, really exciting projects going forward. Um, and, and what I love about it is that creatives will not uh, be shut down. Like they just won't be. Creativity is gonna burst through, even through this time. Um, and it's really exciting to see how people are using kind of Zoom and, and using it to their advantage to be able to simply tell like a story. Yeah, humans endure, right? <laughs> like if nothing else, like we, we really do endure and um, we will be back. And I know it's some, some, it's hard to see that. Um, uh, and, and the converse of that is like, I keep, t keep telling myself, God, we have so much time. You have all this time, like create, do, think. But I also understand that it's, it's you know, it's a Saturday and Saturday, you might not have it, right? Or a lot of people might not know what the thing is that they want to create, right? You guys chose a podcast in this moment. Um, and God willing, this continues and is super successful. But six months from now, you might, I had a podcast for a whole year. And I was like, you know what, okay, we're done. You know, um, so I, I uh, there's something to be said for just trying anything. You know, if it's if it's getting on zoom and reading a play with some friends that that is something Thing, you know, um, I, I think that uh, exploring, I'm, I'm a curious person and, and I think we all are as, as innately as artists, we're curious people, um, but exploring all the things uh, when you have the bandwidth for it in this time, um, journaling, you know, um, I do not like journaling, but I'm trying, <laughs> you know, I'm trying uh, just because I'm like, why not? Um, that That's where... Um, something might lie in that for me, you know? Um, and for, for young people, I think the, I, I harp on this all the time because I've seen a lot of my friends um, be super successful in, with social media and the online and the, the internet is unbelievable. It's unparalleled um, and, and especially in our lifetime. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity to create your own work. Um, I watch all of these things on TikTok and, you know, I'm like, that's hilarious and amazing. And I wouldn't thought of that. And you just gave me, 30 seconds of joy, right? Um, people have made whole careers over that, with that, you know? Um, and I think there's a lot to be said for using that and manipulating social media to be creative. And, and um, not saying you have to have hundreds of thousands of followers and all of that, but that's an outlet, that's a resource. And I think a lot of times we, we look at social media and we, it's built for us to pine for things and to want, and it's part of the system of, of like, oh, this person has, but it's also like, just put it out there just put whatever out there and see what sticks because it's an it's actually a vehicle for us as artists yeah i think there's a, a difference between thinking about it and doing it mm -hmm. and both of you brandon and sophie are amazing examples of actually doing it um and and seeing where it takes you you know awesome absolutely thank you so this is another uh personal favorite question of mine um, and this can be like any show, any point in your career, um, but what has your favorite been? Um, uh, yeah, I would be, I, 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 it sounds so cliche and it's, but it's just the honest answer. It's come from away. <laughs> <laughs> um, thus far, it's just been, um, I'm also in the, in the heart of it, right? Um, but, but come from away is, is probably, uh, I'll never forget this experience. I think it's been, um, yeah, by far the the uh, big highlight of mine. Um, but I, I most of my career is regional. So uh, to Caesar's point about the developmental process, one of the reasons I love regional work is that while these shows already exist, um, you, when you're doing a production, you have what four to six weeks maybe um, with a regional show, depending on the theater. You really get to create 
and excavate. Rehearsal is my, I love performing, don't get me wrong, but rehearsal is my, is what I love because that's the puzzle, right? That's the curiosity. Where are we doing? Where are we going? How are we doing it? Does it work? Um, so uh, I've worked on a lot of Shakespeare that's been uh, really experimental or different. Um, that, that's been cool because Shakespeare is a challenge and then we're using this really weird concept for it. And so how do you make those things glue, right? Um, so th those are kind of things that I that I really enjoy as well, but Come From Away is definitely a highlight. Yeah, if we're talking about things that I've done, I think one of my most joyous experiences is doing uh, Love's Labor's Lost at the Delacorte Theater in Central Park, um, because it was kind of one of those dreams of mine to be able to do um, Shakespeare in the Park with the public theater. And there's nothing like being in the middle of New York outside with thousands of people on a beautiful summer night, uh, speaking some you know amazing text, uh, it feels like such a community that is such a specific thing that can only happen in New York City in that kind of venue. Um, so that, that has definitely been one of my kind of like oh my god moments. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. So just wrapping up with our final two points, we may have already touched on this. Uh, briefly when we asked about the your favorite backstage um, guest. However, are there any cool or um, memorable stories from throughout your both of your careers that, you know, when somebody says, Do you, what's a great story that you have from all this time that, you know, immediately pops out to you? I think I don't know if it's like one of those like all time stories, but I, something that uh, one of our cast members, Joel Hatch brings up at our Q and A's all the time that I love. And I don't think an audience realizes because um, you know, people have this kind of like uh, vision in their head of like, what, what must it be like backstage? And what, what's it like, you know, to prepare for a show like this? And Joel always brings up that all, your, all you'll hear at backstage at Come From Away is laughter, like almost the entire half hour before the show. We're actively there, like listening to each other and making each other laugh. It is such a joyous um, experience. And it's something that I miss so much. Uh, and I wish audiences had kind of like a little like peek into that world because it is kind of like the best version of what you think Broadway would be. This kind of community that comes together and checks in on each other on a daily basis and laughs really hard, like a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and then gets to go on stage together and, and tell a beautiful story that affects, you know, thousands of people on a nightly basis. So um, that that is something that that, sticks out in my mind that I, I will always take with me uh, from this experience. Yeah, this uh, mine is perhaps a little unorthodox, but you know, we're all human and uh, uh, human, human beings are human. <laughs> Uh, and one of my favorite things is, uh, it's terrible to say, is, is when someone makes a mistake <laughs> because, <laughs> because, you know, come from way, like I said earlier, it's this freight train, it just moves straight ahead. And we've all been, you know, been there where we're like, something's messed up. Oh no, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? I hate when I mess up, but <laughs> when other people mess up, they're like, oh my God. But to Caesar's point, it's there's so much joy at our show that we could all walk off stage and just laugh together, right? Because we've done the show so many times. Um, but to that point, one of the, my favorite things is, is not favorite, but when we have a turntable in the show, when the turntable, we have an issue with the turntable, everyone has to go off so we make sure everything's safe. We don't want that to happen in a show, right, ever, but it does because life is life. But the audience has the same experience we're having with it, right? And coming back, we're like, oh, whoa, this is a real life moment. It's happening in real time. Um, this is not supposed to happen. Then we all come back on and the audience is, is with us in a different way. They were all paying attention. They were all watching, but there's something about that interruption and restarting um, that really in, in, um, ignites all of us in a different way. And I think it's because we're having a real moment and people came and expect to see this show run for a hundred minutes and then clap and laugh and all that stuff but they didn't expect that and I think that's one of the coolest things again never want anybody to mess up never want the turntable to stop but it's a really unique experience um, that, I, that I always kind of clock and I'm aware of that I think is um, cool 
That's great. It's a great way of looking at it too, because, you know, certainly it could get to you, I'm sure, in the moment, but it really is a great way to look at how it can affect both sides, both the people watching and then you guys on the reverse on stage as well. For sure. So thank you guys so much for coming on and talking with us and sharing your stories. We had so much fun. I can speak for Brandon on this one. Um, but do you guys have any projects that you're working on right now coming up? You just wrapped up that you'd like to plug here in the last like minute or two? Oh my God, I, I don't know if I'd like to plug anything, but please just support <laughs> artists right now. If you can, I mean, even like a dollar is gonna help. There's so many amazing organizations. Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS is one of them. But talk about a, a time where our industry just needs people. And uh, I keep on thinking of our front house people, our ushers, mm -hmm. uh, people in the box office, uh, you know, some of our crew, our musicians, they're so, people think of Broadway and they think of the actors, but there's thousands of people that make this work. Um, so if you can, this holiday season, do what you can to support an artist. I, I, honestly, uh, anything, anything will go a long way. Just to piggyback on that, another organization is the Actors Fund. I've used their services. Um, they, they do a lot of the same work that Broadway Cares does, um, but um, they, they help thousands of artists in New York City every year. Um, and I'll just say, you know, I, I, I don't have anything specific to plug either, but I would love to give uh, everyone um, space and, and graciousness and, and um, give yourself those things, right? Give yourself gratitude and, and time and um, and yeah, patience with yourself because th what we're doing and going through is a lot. And uh, um, I, it's a daily practice of, of, of breath and it's okay, Delon, it's okay, it's okay. So I wanna give that to everyone as a gift because I, I know we all need it. Absolutely, I, thank you so much. We are going to um, attach the links to Broadway Cares, Equity Fights, AIDS and the Actors Fund um, both to their donation page. So folks that are going to listen to this, please consider finding it within your heart. Even like Caesar said, if it is $1, that dollar will, along with several other dollars, go a long way um, for everybody that makes it happen and will continue to make it happen um, very shortly from now. So thank you both so much. It's been an honor, thrill, and um, just such a great, great time talking with you about your journeys, your careers, offering your great advice and hearing your great experience with a special show like Come From Away. Really appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. you, Brandon and Sophie. This was this was such a pleasure to do and uh, happy holidays, happy New yes, Year. Yes, yes, and congratulations on this project, really. Thank you so much.